Hey, Mark, fake banter for the intro. That's all I know how to do. Great. Good to be here. Welcome to Tuesdays with... Stories. Hit her in the face with a surfboard. And then the duck fell out of his bag. <laughs> Surf's up. And she didn't even flush. Knock, knock. Who's there? Mark Norman and Joe List. Yeah! This is Tuesdays with Stories, everybody. No, nah, that's terrible. This is supposed to be cheesy. My radio is spitting at me. Ah! Woo! Tis the season. Jizz the season. Uh, it, it's Christmas time. I'm gay. I got a candy cane up my ass. I got my tree lit. Having a blast. I love Christmas. Sorry, Jews. I love Chris. I think the Jews love Christmas, right? I mean, I think you're right. They, I, I think they just full on have Christmas now. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you got to do it. It's, it's. We shove it down their assholes. I mean, it's, it's so American. The commercials, yeah. the music, but less than it used to be. Now everything's the holiday and the business. And I don't want to be one of these guys that's like, whatever. <laughs> but um, Christmas rules. Fuck you. Take Christmas and stick it in your ass. It's great. I mean, I'm sorry, Jews, with your beards and your reading from left to right, get get or right to left, get get a grip. I mean, we got a Frosty, the snow, we got a Santa, we got a tree, we got gifts. You can't beat it. We got carols. They got they got you know Ezekiel or Mortimer. So I've been learning a lot about a Christmas Carol. My friend Sean Sullivan, you know Sean, great comic up funny, in Boston. Funny guy. Very funny. He's got a podcast where it's all about a Christmas Carol. It's like a seasonal thing. And he talks to people about their favorite version of a Christmas Carol. I never got into a Christmas Carol. I'm not a Christmas Carol guy. Is that uh, Scrooge McDuck, Beelzebub? Uh, what is it? Uh, what does he say? Bah humbug. Bah humbug. Yes, which I think is a Middle Eastern dish. Yeah, ba, it's bah humbug, and it's it's a uh, Charles Dickens novella. Yes. Yes. Um, it wrote it in 1848 or something. And a lot of the Christmas spirit and the business, I was just reading the Wikipedia page a couple uh, days ago. A lot of the Christmas stuff comes from that version, the, the, the giving spirit, the idea of charity and, and blowing a guy on Christmas Eve. That whole thing comes from Charles Dickens. Uh-huh. And because they didn't really do that before and christmas i guess was fading out a little bit or they only did it in the country but not the cities or something right. but dickens really stuck it up everyone's ass ah, i didn't know that i had never really watched much of the dickens so the episode of the podcast i just know it from SN, uh, not snl saved by the bell both nbc bullshit shows sure. uh saved by the bell did a christmas carol so we talked about that episode but I, then I, I watched the 1938 Black and white, suck my dick, Citizen Kane style. Yeah, Christmas Carol, and I, it was quite touching. It's beautiful. It still holds up. I mean, it, a good story is a good story, and it, it's poignant with the with the past and the future and the transitioning. It's good. Yeah, and uh, Bah Humbug comes from that, and Scrooge. The term Scrooge is now just part of it. You're a real Scrooge. You Scrooge right. me, Scroogey, whatever. Isn't that interesting? It's almost like Seinfeldian, where like yada yada yada. Not that there's anything wrong with that. Man hands, like art, can can just bleed into regular everyday life. Yeah, it really it really bled all over uh, the panties and ruined them. But it's pretty exciting. <laughs> I, but here's the thing: I'm embarrassed about. You know me. It's a Wonderful Life, my favorite movie. I want to be George Bailey. I want to blow Clarence. But I didn't realize that It's a Wonderful Life is so similar to Christmas Carol. Like, it's ghosts, oh. and they watch themselves. Like, they ripped it off, for Christ's sake. Complete ri- I mean, I, I thought that was a known thing, that it was an updated version, much like West Side Story is Romeo and Juliet. I, I think it's known-ish, but it, it's a little bit different. I think it's because it's he's, he's watching the future, past, and present, and blah, 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 and it's like, this is what happens if you keep acting the way you're acting. Yep. Whereas George is like, this is what would have happened if you weren't around. Right. So there's differences, but they both have ghosts. They're both, I don't Christmas, know. Christmas, family, and white, Christmas. Be, be a, become a better person, all that. You know what would be a nice uh, Christmas story would be like famous people. You know, like the guy who came from nothing, became the biggest star on the planet, and then, you know, started beating women and whatever, and then he died of a drug overdose. Basically, I'm talking about Elvis. But like... It'd be cool to do a Christmas story that way, where, you, where like Fat Elvis would come down and go, "Hey man, you're doing these karate kicks and you're a young hot piece of a, but uh, you better cool it with the pills." 
Wait, so old Elvis comes and talks to young Elvis. No Christmas, you're saying? Yeah, yeah. Just no, get the Christmas shit out. But I like the idea of the old guy, old you, coming down to tell you, like, I mean, how many people get famous and then just lose their shit and then go off the rails and become a drug addict or spend all their money and then they, they, they die alone without a penny? I mean, aren't there some comedians you'd like to say that to? Go, uh, hey, just so you yes. know, you're, you're, you're tweeting about, you know, uh, a charity every day. I mean, you got nine tweets about an election. It's time to throw a joke in there. Maybe get a little silly. Exactly. I mean, that wouldn't hurt. By the way, did Elvis beat women? Is that something? Well, I don't want to cast that aspersions in. on the king here. I don't know that he beat anybody. He probably well, he was did, married. But. He was married to a 15-year-old. He loved the pain pills. He liked to eat uh, peanut butter and banana sandwiches. He died on the can. Can. Yeah, dying on, <laughs> die on the can is good, but I mean, hey, I used to eat pills and shake my hips, but I never hit no dames, and I fucked a few fifteen-year-olds in the uh, you know morning. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think he was. Uh, I'm sure he slapped abroad every now and then. I mean, he grew up in the 1910s or whatever. <laughs> Did you ever see, I posted on my Instagram uh, a dog's age ago, but did you ever see his mother, that documentary, his mother is identical to Rosie O'Donnell. I have seen that. It's, it's wild. Bananas. It's up on my Instagram. You can scroll and find it, or you can just watch the movie, which is great. I mean, it couldn't look more like Rosie O'Donnell, <laughs> so they gotta. They should remake an Elvis, but maybe the movie you're talking about, and get Rosie in there. She comes back, and she's all fat and whatever. There you go. And by the way, she was a ghoul. The husband looked like a fucking gargoyle, and then they they together they made this specimen. He's like six two, beautiful black hair, gorgeous face. Like women love him. He's got moves. He's like a wigger. I mean, <laughs> it was uh, it was like a perfect man. Uh, um, yeah, that is wild because similarly, you know, there's a lot of people out there, hot people with ugly parents, but are there hot people that have ugly kids? I think so. Yeah, that would be a fun little uh, Google dive, Google image dive. Like, hot people making ugly kids and ugly people making hot kids. Yeah, that's interesting. I mean, Mother Nature's a mad scientist, <laughs> as we know. But, I mean, I feel like I look pretty much like my dad. Similar, you know, things going on. Yeah, I feel like I'm ex the exact, like, uh, half and half of my mom and dad. I got a clit, I got tits, I got a balls. But I, I'm exactly both of them. <laughs> Well, it's all interesting stuff, but yeah, tis the season. Happy holidays. And just a, a reminder, an update, a, 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 what's that called when they, they say a, a, a program alert? Ooh, I wouldn't have gotten that. Here's a program alert. As, as we always do, we're taking next week off. We take Christmas off to go be with the family. But if you're a Patreon, if you're a patron, there will be a live Tuesday, December 22nd, the eve of Eddie Vedder's birthday. There will be a live stream, whatever you call it, the thing we did a couple weeks ago. We're going to take your questions at 5 p.m. Eastern. So get on the Patreon if you're not already. Give the gift of Patreon. And at 5 Eastern, uh, you know, 2 Pacific, 4 Central, yeah. 3 Mountain Time. Uh, we're gonna be uh, we're gonna be sixty nining on camera here. So get on the Patreon, join that Patreon for the holidays, and you'll get your episode that way. Yeah, yeah. So the real the real queefs will will get the, the the pay dirt, the jackpot, the the pot of gold at the end. So become a member, and we're gonna do an AMA. Ask me anything. It'll be live streaming on YouTube. Yeah, we're gonna do some American Music Awards and uh, American Medical Association. Yeah, a lot of AMAs. Yeah, Ain't old men's. Awareness. <laughs> <laughs> that was a great pull. <laughs> Anal men's awareness. Ooh, do you do you learn? Do you become aware when they fuck in the ass, or do you are you aware before that? Yeah, I think there's like a whiteboard, and they kind of draw, you know, that, some dicks in your butt and whatnot. I think it's a brown board, but either way, <laughs> brown versus on the, the board, board of education. <laughs> um, Woo! That's a good one. What was Brown versus the board? That's the black kids could go to school with the whites or just any school. What, what exactly is that one? No, I think Brown's just the guy's name. I don't even think he was talking about the skin color. I well, think, certainly that's his name. I, I understand that. I'm joking. But uh -oh. uh, I think that was something with uh, education, and I don't think that was segregation. I think it was. Brown versus the board of education. I think the board was like, I think it just happened to be that the kid's name was Brown. The oh, guy's okay. Name, well, I that think. worked out. And then the Board of Education was like, hey, get, get Mr. Brown out of here. 
I think, uh-huh. right? Shelby, can we get a ruling on that? I think that's Brown versus the Board of Education. Give it a goog, Shelbo. Because there's some of these cases they just mention. Roe v. Wade is a, an abortion. Abortion. But some of these they throw out there, and you're like, oh, yeah, certainly. But I never looked this shit up. No, who would? It's all context. Also, very intimidating when they say, uh, you know, the city of Los Angeles versus Mike Johnson. You're like, geez, I got I to gotta take the whole city? Shouldn't it just be a few people? Yeah, six million people, for God's sakes. Right, that's the Holocaust. And then sometimes it's the people of the United States. Right, right, that's a little intimidating. It's like Norm's bit. It's me versus the world. Right. Yeah, I I never liked that. My my parents were lawyers, so I'd always hear about that shit. And I was always like, geez, you're fighting the whole city of New Orleans? Here it is. Ruled segregation in schools was unconstitutional. All right, you called it. Yeah, well done, uh, Board of Education. Or, or Brown. Sure. No, Brown won. Oh, right. Well, he what? beat the whole board. Yeah, well, the board stunk back then. Bad board. What can it's Brown do for you? <laughs> I'm bored. All right, I'm joking. But, man, so much to, to get into. Uh, I, I, I've been up, down, left, right, sick, healthy, gay, straight, man, woman, brown, honky, you name it. I'm all over it. All right, well, we'll, we'll get it started. I'm, I'm going to throw the ball right into your court and, and, and shoot a three if you want or do a layup or, you know, deflate it. Well, Evan, let me, let me do that thing that the cool NBA guys do where I'm dribbling down the court and I just hock it towards the goal and then you uh, jump up, catch it, and then dunk it. I believe that's known as an alley-oop. Ooh. All right. Well, did the, did the, did the uh, Globetrotters come up with that? I don't know who invented the alley oop. I think that's a chick- fun. It's a fun name. It seems like they would come up with a good name. Alley oop. I don't know who Chick Hearn came up with slam dunk. He was the Lakers guy, and his name was Chick, which is fun. Yeah. And he was the first one to say slam dunk. He's like the Alan Freed of basketball. But alley oop, probably. Uh, I don't know. I got to think that's like seventies ish. Feels a little seventies ish because it's kind of playful and fun. Now everything's like. You know, N word, coffee, dunk, sister. It's it's kicked up a notch. All right. Uh, so did a gig last weekend in Bridgeport, Connecticut. Not bragging. Speaking of Brown, and uh, it was pretty wild. That's a that's a sad town over there. One of the worst. I mean, you know, you don't want to hurt anyone's feelings, but that is a real shit city. Shit city. I mean, it just was once a thriving like coastal little cute new england town and it just uh i don't know it's been ravaged by aids and anal it's 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 part of the ama and uh so whatever it's a great club it's a vinnie brand club so i go there me and ian lara he drives down we have a great ride down he's one of those guys you get in the car and you're just zinging and zanging he's just a great egg and he knows comedy he's a funny kook and uh we we do the show we check into the hotel Right when we get to the hotel, I'm feeling a little nippy. I'm like, ah, oh, I've been Ooh. feeling fine all day, but now I feel like cold on the inside. Ooh, inside cold. Yes. My horrible. mother has that. Yeah, so I'm like, oh, it's weird. So let, let me go up, take a hot shower. I figure, hey, we've been out in the, the, the freezing, you know, northeast air, you know, with the windows down driving. Maybe I'm just chilly. We go upstairs, and I'm just getting colder and colder i'm like god damn i got my jacket on i got a hoodie on so i go let me take a hot shower take a hot shower all the way up all the way to hot still not getting guy it's like kramer i, I couldn't my core i needed my core to warm up bad so core. I, I lay under the covers i i'm shivering you know and then i go well i got a show tonight so i go downstairs i try to fake it and i go downstairs i meet ian we go to the club and, you know, you get to the green room, you meet everybody. Hey, how you doing? Here's your opener. Here's your manager. Here's your waitress, whatever. Do the show. Show goes great. And, you know, me and Ian want to have a few. We want to tilt a few. So we start drinking. And I'm just freezing the whole time. I mean, we're indoors. The heat is on. The heat is on. And I'm freezing, but I'm trying to hide it. And we're all hanging out, busting balls. We go back to the hotel, and I just get under the covers again and I'm trembling. I'm, my teeth are chattering. And I'm like, well, I got something. This is bad. I don't know what's going on. I might have COVID. I'm freaking out. So I, fi- I just lay there for hours. My brain is like mushy and hot. I'm, I'm, my body is hot, but I feel cold. Never a right. good sign. 
No, that's uh, that's a bad sign. So I'm Googling COVID symptoms. Am I gay? Am I dead? What do I got here? Is it scurvy? And, you know, you can't Google. It's, it's, all, it's all shit. It's like, well, you might have this. You might have that. You know, you coughed once. That means you're, you're a dad's a fag or whatever it is. So I'm just freaking out. So I'm like, do I tell the manager? Do I tell the club owner? What do I do here? And I go, well, let me just see how I feel in the morning. I finally fall asleep at 530 in the morning. Wake up at 10 a.m. Pool of sweat. Oh, boy. Yeah. But I feel better. But I'm in a pool oh. of sweat. Oh, okay. But I try to do the right thing, and I go, all right, this is this probably COVID. It's got to be something. So I call the, the club manager, and I go, I think I should get tested. I feel like hell. And he's like, can you do the shows? And I'm like, I, I don't know. Let's see. So he picks me up. And by the way, when people think you have COVID, they tre- he's like, get in the back. Keep the mask on. Don't look at me. You know, uh, windows down. I don't want to talk to you. I don't want to hear from you. I don't want to know you. And you feel like an idiot back. I got my head hanging out the window like a fucking cocker spaniel. We finally get to the test. 150 bucks. Do the rapid. Negative. Woo. I mean, first of all, I agree. People can be so prickly when you have a horrible fever during a (laughs) massive pandemic that's killed a quarter of a million people. They get so standoffish. I don't blame the guy. I'm just saying it's a a shift in in how you get treated. It's shifty, but so you got the rapid test. Now, are you standing there? Are you trying to make it look like you, you, you're you not in a pool of sweat? You don't have chill? Like, is, is it a, a thing? Are you nervous that people are going to start throwing rocks and eggs at you? Well, I mean, it was, it was you know, 11 a.m., so I got in his car, went straight to the clinic, got the test, went back to the hotel, and I just waited. So I wasn't, like, around people. Right. And then, uh, you know, an hour and a half later... I hey you're negative and I was like oh wow it's one of the things where I got the call I was like you sure really and, and then I just took it easy all day and like just laid down again and you know Ian's like let's get lunch let's go do this and I'm like ah, I'm out I'm out I didn't want to tell anybody but then I got to the club and I I came clean but we did two shows that night got drunk did two shows the next night and uh, all's well that ends well so what do you think you got a little bug a little something crawled in your ass. I think I had a 12-hour flu jizz bug up my dick hole, uh, and it just came and went. That that breaking of the sweat was was the game changer. Wow, that is fascinating, because you don't hear much about the 24-hour bug these days, the 12-hour bug, but I guess there has to be regular bugs out there. I mean, the bugs are they're alive. I mean, we still have bugs. Yeah, it's a bug's life, you know? So I was, I think my body was just trying to fight something in me for 10 hours and it finally did it and then it was like all right we can take a breather well you're probably a healthy guy you get some vitamin dizzle well you know about covid melatonin i I looked at when they showed trump's cocktail i I snapped a photo and it's melatonin vitamin d and famitodine which i take every day for reflux and melatonin you take all the time and all the uh, time yeah so you know, maybe maybe you got some, uh, you know, a good defense system in there. Because melatonin, if it beats COVID or it fights COVID, it must fight other shit, I guess. I guess, yeah. And, I mean, we're relatively young. We're thin. Uh, we're, we're, we're podcasting Zoom-wise. We're douchey. We f- I wear a mask. I follow the most of the protocol. So, but, hey, you never know. It can happen. Um, I mean, we just had 17 friends of ours get COVID. So I figured, oh, well, they they all just got it. That news just broke. So I'm like, I must have it. Yeah. Well, it's good to know that you didn't and you don't. And uh, how are the shows? Uh, the shows are great. I mean, here's the problem, though, is there's a 10 o'clock curfew in town. So usually the show starts at 8 and 10. Now the show start at 6 and 8. So a 6 o'clock show in a shit town is uh no bueno i mean it was rough we had 12 people on the saturday early yikes so and then the saturday late was like killer i love those times though with people that's the same thing i had when i was in foxborough we had you know eight people at the first one and sold out the second one but i love the times and that i like being done at 9 30 is like beautiful that was that. I mean, we drove back. I was in my bed by 12.01, thanks to Fatty and Lara, because he, he fucking hauled ass back. By the way, shout out to Ian. He missed an exit on the highway, 
pulled off her the shoulder, waited, and just whoop, reversed that puppy right back into the, the main highway, and we took off. This sounds like the most reckless gig I've ever heard of in my life. <laughs> you're backing up on the highway. You're doing shows with a fever during a pandemic. I mean, this is, this is your out, outcat. What do you call it? Outlaws. Outlaw, yeah, we're pushing it, baby. No holds anal, and uh, we had a we had a great weekend. We did it up, and oh man, we went to this. Uh, I guess it's Caribbean or Jamaican restaurant, and it was brunch Something. on Saturday. We go in, we just want to get a fucking burger, and it's like a de- full DJ. You can't even hear each other speaking. I'm the only white guy there. I walk in, it goes, you know, and then we sit down. We have chicken and waffles, and uh, it was the weirdest brunch ever, but. I had Ian with me, so I was cool. Nice. What what kind of what's Jamaican food all about? That doesn't sound pleasant to me. It was uh, I don't know if it was Jamaican, but it was definitely some black owned thing with like collard greens and you know black eyed peas and all that. So it was like Southern comfort food mixed with brunch, mixed with Creole cuck holding. I don't know. They got a they got a mac and cheese situation. What are they we got talking here? I got the mac and cheese. Okay, all right. Now we're talking. I like mac and cheese. I like cuckolding. I like black. So that, that sounds okay. I could get through with that. It was great. We had a great, great time. Uh, so then hightail it back. Boy, I got so much here. I, did you please jump in? Because I don't want to hog the mic too much here. No, go. I got a couple things. I'll sprinkle them in. I'll spritz and sprinkle. All right. So the next night I'm back in the, the Big Apple, and this kid, Sean Malia. I don't know if you saw, he did a, a shoot for me in Jersey where he posted me trying new jokes called Joke Tweaking in Jersey. He's a 21-year-old piece of nothing. And this kid is so motivated, and he said, you want to do my podcast? I said, sure. I go meet up on 60th and 1st, right by Bloomingdale's. He's got his own studio. It's all jacked out with cameras and lights, and it's like there's like 10 kids there smoking weed. They're all 21 years old. These youngsters, man, they, they got it figured out. Wow. I mean, that sounds amazing to me. I, I don't know how all these whippersnappers have all these setups. I, I, I'm, I lament the fact, I remember back in 2009, uh, Nick DiPaolo was opening for him. He had this web guy, Mike Baker, who was like the super web guy. And he's like, you can't afford me, but I think you're the future of comedy and I want to help you. And he was telling me about Twitter and Instagram. He got me all <laughs> signed up and he connected all of them. He's like, the YouTube is the future. And yep. he connected my YouTube and my Gmail and the thing. And I was drinking, of course, at the time. And I yeah. remember just being like, what the fuck are you talking about? I just ignored all of it. And it's like the ghost of Christmas Elvis or whatever we were talking about. Right. Blue Christmas. I, I wish I could go back. I had, I had a guy telling me, giving me the secrets, giving me the passwords. I did nothing with any of it. Exactly. And now I'm over here just going, can somebody subscribe to my YouTube? I got 48 YouTube followers. And, yep. and Twitter, I didn't use for five years. I literally just, I had one tweet that said, trying to figure this out. And <laughs> I, I feel like such a fucking dummy. But all these kids, they have the podcast. See, we didn't have Bill Burr and Jim Gaffigan going, here's what you got to do. These exactly. whippersnappers. Not to mention, they're fucking slipping into my DMs. I had a kid hiding in the bushes the other day asking me to punch up his script. I'm like, they're, they're bold, these young assholes. They're bold, they're entitled, they're cunty, but they're they're clever. I mean, these kids, again, they're 21, 22. I mean, do you remember what we were doing at 21 or 22? No, because we were in a blackout. I was scaling some building that had scaffolding with my pants down while I, so I could strategically shit in my friend's cup from two floors up. You know, that's what I was doing when I was 21. You know, we're spray painting, we're skateboarding, we're, we're finger popping, whatever it is. But these kids are like, I'm going to work this up, then I'm going to sell it to Gary V, then he's going to buy it. We already got three sponsors. Uh, Mountain Dew is, is one of them, and, and we were on Spotify, we're on this. All these kids did was work for Spotify, listen to rap, shitty mumble rap, and then be like, this, this, they're like, this guy's an ex-Bieber right here. I'm like, who, who's this? It's like some kid in Florida. I mean, they're what's, so advanced. What's I think an ex-Bieber? Yeah, there's something to, like, obviously we have the internet and all these new apps and, and technology, but there's something to the fact that, like, we didn't have a phone growing up. We were just left to our own devices. We were like stray cats. And these kids are so tuned up and t- dialed into the to society that they can just accomplish way more. And hey, that's funny. We were left without our own devices. Aha! Uh-huh. Uh, but I was thinking about that the other day because I was my niece and nephew. Uh, I was hanging with them, and they were like, "Okay, you go text me when you come here or call at this time." Isn't it so funny to think about 
when we were kids, we left and nobody knew where we were for hours. Like even at the great. age of like ten. Yeah, you'd just I know. be gone for for a day, and then just be like, be back at eight. And I was in the woods. Nobody knew anything. Nobody knew that was totally normal. I, and you could have been with a Cub Scout masker who was diddling your your nips. You could have been, you know, in the ocean drowning. You could have been driving a car, you know, with a beer between your legs. They didn't know, and that was part of it. And there's perks to that. You know, I think oh, it yeah. made you grow up quicker. It made you ballsier, bolder. But uh, oh, yeah, I had perks all the time. I loved them. Yeah, exactly. So <laughs> that there's there's pros and and cons to this, but like these kids, they're they're gonna start their lives so much sooner. You know, I didn't start my life till 26 or whatever. I moved to New York and got things going, but. These kids started at 17, and they already got, like, a production company. They got a podcast. They got a porno channel. They got an app. It's pretty amazing. Well, but that's the ones that use it right, because some of the kids, right. all the numbers are going down of sex. People are having sex later, getting True. their license later. They're doing less because they're all f- fucked up, and suicide is, like, through the roof. Through the roof. Autism is through the roof. Anxiety and pill addiction is through the roof. So, yeah, there's, there's with every good thing comes uh, Bill Cosby also. Through the roofies. Uh, hey, speaking of which, some of these kids are probably out there smoking things. And this episode of Tuesdays with Stories is brought to you by Lucy Nicotine Gum. Ooh, you're going to need it, kids. <laughs> the, <laughs> Lucy Nicotine Gum. Sorry for laughing. Sometimes things just strike me funny. This company was founded by Caltech scientists who were former smokers. They wanted to create a better and cleaner nicotine alternative to help people quit smoking and vaping. It took them three years of research and experimenting, and they made Lucy, a nicotine gum that actually tastes good. How about that? It comes in three flavors, wintergreen, cinnamon, and pomegranate. Pomegranate. Each (laughs) serving has four milligrams of nicotine. They also make lozenges that are cherry ice flavored. Wow, that sounds fun. Love when you're ice. craving a smoke, you just need a little something to satisfy the habit. Get Lucy so you're prepared for the itch. Tell them about it, Mark. You got some experience with this. I've tasted some, uh, you know, sometimes you just want a piece of gum. I'm not a, really a smoker, but I've tasted nicotine gum, and it is rough. But this stuff actually tastes great, and they're supporting this show, so go support them. Get 20% off all products, including gum or lozenges. At Lucy.co with code Tuesdays. That's 20% off Lucy.co and use promo code Tuesdays at checkout. Yes. Uh, This product contains nicotine derived from tobacco. Nicotine is an addictive chemical. But you already knew that, so get 20% off at Lucy.co with code Tuesdays. Yeah, (laughs) that away, Lucy. Yeah. Doing the Lord's work. And I'll tell you who else is sponsoring this episode. Who's now, that? this is something I know a lot about. Sheath Underwear. Woo-wee. Tuesdays with Stories is brought to you by Sheath Underwear. Now, you guys know about Sheath. We talk about it a lot. These guys, this guy, first of all, the best underwear I've ever worn in my goddamn life. And this guy's a Tuesday. He's a skank head. What do they call him? Skank hand people. I don't know. Yeah, he likes Lewis. Uh, Rapist. <laughs> he likes Lewis. He likes us. Good guy. You, I, you know all about it. you got to keep your balls off your leg. They come with these pouches. It's hard to explain to people. The underwear has like a little hole in it. Not a little hole, a huge hole for me personally, but it's a massive hole that I stick my huge rod in, and it keeps your dick and balls separate. It keeps your balls off of your leg. It's hard to explain. you got to just get it. Just get it and try it out. I am telling you, it's the best underwear. It's got that cool Transformer-looking logo. It's just sexy underwear. It's soft. It's smooth. It looks good on my... It hugs my asshole. It's really yes. great stuff. It is very sexy looking. And my wife has got some, too. She wears it around the house. The idea of Sheath came from its founder, U.S. Army soldier Robert Patton, during his second tour in Iraq. If it works in the sun-blasted deserts of Iraq, you know it'll work wherever you live. This stuff is first class. You're supporting a veteran. You're supporting a fan. Get some Sheath underwear. Tell them how, Mark. Here, here. Love the sheath. It's comfortable and sexy, which is a rare combo. You know, usually when your girlfriend's like, I'm going to put on something more comfortable. It's a fucking hazmat suit or some shit, but not the sheath. And she, ironically, sheath underwear are a panty dropper. Every time I throw one on, she's uh, dripping between the old nether regions. Go to sheathunderwear.com and order with promo code TUESGAYS to get 20% off your first order 
and Sheath Underwear's 100% money back guarantee. That's sheathunderwear.com, promo code TUESGAYS. Support the show by supporting them. Get Sheath Underwear and let them support your balls. I'm going to get some more myself. I could use so because I've been, you know, staying in my underwear. And do you wear the same underwear two days in a row ever? My wife hates me. All, She's like, I could time. never do that because my pussy stinks and it leaks. But I do it. I, I'm fine. I do it too. I feel like I got two days and then I flip it and wear, I, I re- reverse it and then wear that side for two days. Yeah, I think, I think we're fine. But it sucks to have a pussy because those pussies there's just like legos and bottle caps falling out of them this pus this toothpaste it's very it's, bizarre it's tough it, it's like a, a runny nose all the all day you know it's and you know there's eggs and placenta all kinds of weird shit paper clips but yeah all right so back to the program uh when did the hyenas hyenas where the history Dallas? hyenas oh history hyenas be careful doing that pod I know, that's a COVID den over there, but uh, weirdly, Chris D. never got it, so it's this weird little, COVID's like a weird little picky and choosy mom choose Jif, and they pick who gets it. He never got it, I never got it, so we I took Giannis's place, and uh, it was fun. I mean, they got a big studio. Bay, you ever been to Bay Ridge? Never in my life. Oh, maybe I drove around there on the way to Stony Brook College, uh, but no, not really. I mean, it's a little, it's like, a, I always say it's a 1998 museum down there. It's like old New York, the deli guy, the butcher guy with the blood all over him. And it, I'll tell you this, it feels like a place you say uh, Merry Christmas, not Happy Holidays, if you know what I mean. Well, I read you loud and clear. Yeah, but just beautiful brownstones and every lawn is manicured. The, the ocean's right there or the bay, whatever you call it. You should check it out. Do, do a day trip with the gal. It's funny that you say that because I was just watching News 1, the, that little city news. That's yeah. great, great <laughs> news, by the way. Love it. It just New You York turn the one. TV on, it comes on, New York 1, and they were in Bay Ridge. And, you know, I love Saturday Night Fever, and, um, and they showed the bridge in the background. I said, hey, I should pop down there sometime and be a, a Bay Ridge roller. But yes. uh, I'll have to go check it out, but never been. Yeah, it's cool. I mean... We did a whole super chat. We made some money, but just a great, great hang. And uh, things like feels like things are kind of turning for in our, in our favor for the comedy world. Yeah, I think so. I hope so. I don't know. I mean, uh, we're doing great. They're doing great. There's, I've been saying this for quite a while, by the way, is that, you know, all of the stuff we hate, the SJW, PC, cancel culture, it allows shows like us and our friends to people go, thank God is a place we can go for this stuff. Right, and so we're actually benefiting quite a quite a bit from it. As as terrifying as it is, it is terrifying and scary. But yeah, I mean, we just funny first. I hate to be that cum guzzling Nazi who says that dumb phrase, but you know, you you say a horrible thing about a guy in a wheelchair who falls down some stairs, but you just try to get a laugh. I don't actually hate wheelchaired men tumbling down a, a case of stairs. It's just I'm going for a, a yuck here. Yeah, and if you're in a wheelchair, you deserve to die. Exactly. That's why I put a broomstick between your spokes. So, fun times in the Big Apple, but we got a gig on Friday down in Austin. Ooh, I love Austin. I mean, we've always loved Austin. You got a special place in your anal cavity for it. It's, uh, but it's it's kicked it up a notch. I mean, Austin. It feels like L.A. now. It's like hot people, celebrities. Elon Musk is doing heroin in an alleyway with a cowboy hat on. Rogan's there. Chappelle is there. Ron White. All these people, and you're just like, I gotta move here. You you land. You get off the plane. Not to mention, New York is like a fucking limp dick. You know, everything closes at two, that's cold, there's hobos, the barrel fires. Austin is just popping. It is on, it's on fire in a good way. Yeah, I went, last time I was there, this summer, I was there in July, and Sarah's sister lives there. She's got a great big apartment. Like, she lived in Astoria, moved to Austin during the whole business. We go to her place. I mean, it's like spectacular she's got a balcony you can see the capital i'm out there meditating and, and uh, you know smoking a cigar and she's got an island in her kitchen don't you want an island uh, in your kitchen she's got uh, a kitchen Ep- island epstein's island love that island uh, there's nothing like an island. you feel like an adult and, and it's warm in the neighborhood and magnolia and all that shit you love and i i said the same thing i was like we should just fucking move here fuck it. yeah because it i mean now's the time it's about to blow up real estate wise i'd imagine 
Uh, and yeah, we went. We were there all weekend. It's fucking two weeks till Christmas. The sun is out. It's sixty five degrees. We're on bikes. We're kayaking. It just has a better vibe. I mean, you you know you, we live in New York. It's a shooting every day, and uh, most of that's me with jizz on my lady's back. But still, it's just so. Uh, I feel like New York's like a big dick. Everybody wants a big dick, but right now it can't get hard. The energy is gone. All right, I'm gonna push back a little bit on that, but all right. Uh, I mean, well, I, I love gotta, it. Of course, but, well, the problem is, you know, we got a big pandemic here, the whole sure. situation. I mean, if all things being equal, no no pan, I'm still taking New York over Austin. Is great. I'd rather live in New York and visit Austin than live uh-huh. in Austin and visit New York, I think, personally. But I could be persuaded, but I like the New York diner scene any time of day in normal times. But I'll get into this a little bit later because I want to hear about Austin. But yesterday it was 58 degrees here in in New York in December, no problems. And I got a nice group of people together in Central Park. We all oh. went to Shake Shack. We all fucked in the ass, and it was fantastic. That Central Park with the skyline on a nice day, and it was great. People throwing frisbees. Again, I'll get into it a little more later. But New York has still got the goods when it's good. Yeah, when it's good, there's nothing better. It's the best city in the world, I think. And uh, look, you're talking to a guy who's got two places here. So I, I ain't leaving. I'm just saying that Austin really tickles your taint a little bit. You go, oh, and you know, I got the lady on my arm, and she's like, this is fucking great. The sun is shining. She's got a, one of those big hats on. And uh, it, it, was, it was a magical couple days. Just wanted to throw that out. All right. You like the big hat? Not really, but a lady can pull it off. She's got the sunglasses on. The sun is shining. Hey, you know, she was uh, she was vacation mode. Yeah, it's fun if you're being... I think the hat is fun. If you're being silly, you go, ah, I'm wearing a hat. It's sunny. It's goofy. It's the Kentucky Derby. But these people you see with just a regular hat, they got like... Like they're in a band. You know that right. hat, that, like the Patrice O'Neal hat and like a hipster lady? I'm like, what are you doing? Now, it's so forced. that You can tell they were in their mirror for 20 minutes going... Can I do this? Can I pull this off? And you're like, you kind of think no, but you're a lady, so I'm not gonna, you know, I'm not gonna shit in your hat. Right. All right. So tell me more about Austin. You're there. You're doing shit. What are you at? What? What? Where are you working? So this guy hit me up. I shouldn't say this because my agent's gonna rape me. But uh, this guy hit me up. He goes, Hey, we're open for business. If you want to come down, I feel like we could sell some tickets. I got a restaurant, blah, blah, blah. I said, the money was amazing. I said, I'm in. This guy took care of me. They usually do shows in LA, but once again, they took their whole business to, to keep Austin weird, and it was phenomenal. It was great, and I did, uh, did the Rogan show, so you get that whole thing, so now you're getting paid to go down there and do Rogan, which is a huge, huge honor and all that crap, and it was great, but the only problem was right when we announced tickets... Hey, Chappelle's coming to town with uh, co-headlining with Rogan and Michelle Wolf and Mo Ammer and you know Will Sylvince and all that shit. So we kind of got screwed there. Big J was there. Bill Burr was there. I mean, it was like it was Moon Tower. Jesus, that's what I was gonna say. It sounds like Moon Tower down there. My God, it, it's comedy Disneyland down there, and the sunshine. I had I had barbecue with Big J. I did Rogan's pot. I got drunk with Michelle Wolf. I mean, it was just it was magic. Wow, that sounds amazing. I mean, I haven't seen Wolf since February. I miss the Wolf. Wolf's doing great. I mean, she's she's putting them back as usual. And uh, I got tickets to my lady to go to see Chappelle. She was blown away. Wolf, she said Wolf killed. And, uh, you know, it was just great time. Got tested. She got tested. And we just, we just lived it up. We day drank all day on Saturday. I did two shows, sold some merch. And here, I got to give a shout-out to a guy named Bailey. Huge Tuesday, huge fan. Look what he got me. Kind of a callback to last week. Whoa, the Jerry Playboy. Yes, mint condition. That's a beauty. Wow, where did he find that? These people just have Playboys laying around. I know. I, he said something. He moved into a new house, and there was a stack of them, and he saw this one, and he said, I'm going to the Norman show. I'm bringing it. I'm going to give it to him. We got a photo. We hugged. We, we, we did a reach around, and the rest is history. Now, that's amazing. See, I'm jealous of that because you can frame that and – Put it on the thing. You got a Seinfeld. I can't be framing Elle McPherson. I can't just put up an Elle McPherson in the house. <laughs> I mean, first of all, you know, my wife's going to shit onions, but and people are just like, why do you have Elle McPherson? Who's Elle McPherson? Why is she up there? Great pantyhose. But the Seinfeld one, that's an actual, you know, hey, I like Jerry. That's why I have a bunch of tits on my wall. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah, that's tough. By the way, that's from 1993. Isn't that wild? Wow. Yeah, that is sh- wild. The show is in full swing. 
I mean, uh, yeah, just uh, now I got to tell you this little tidbit, then I'm going to turn it over. So every night, I'm there Friday and Saturday, flew home Sunday. So Friday night, big after party, Chappelle's in town, he's going to rent a hotel, roof, blah, blah, blah. So the lady lands, I do my shows, she visits some friends in town, we link up, and I say, let's go to the Chappelle after party. Wolf is there, Will Vince is there, Rogan's there, the whole, the whole kit and caboo. So she goes, great. I get the scoop, Sypha Sounds lets me know where it is. We show up, it's on the penthouse of this beautiful hotel and you know, right downtown. And the guy goes, whoop, 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 who do you know here? And he can see the whole party in the back and I'm like, oh geez, that's a celebrity, there's that guy. And I go, hey, uh, Michelle Wolf told me to come. And he's like, have you been tested? I said, I did Rogan today. He tests you, he goes, all right, all right. What about her? And I go, she got tested last week. And he goes, ah, that's, that's bullshit, get out. So oh. she, the lady was a, a trooper, and she was like, just go, I'll, I'll hang out, you want to see your friends? I was like, I can't, I can't leave you. So I went with her, and so, you know, we had a drink at a bar alone, sadly, but we still got Saturday night. Okay. So Saturday night, she goes to the Chappelle show at Stubbs, 400 people, bananas, the whole thing, rappers and DJs and everything. She gets a rapid test, negative. So... I do my shows. We link up. And we go, tonight's the night. We show up. They go, who do you know here? I go, I know Michelle Wolf. I know Sypha. And they're all waving at me. And uh, he goes, all right, has she been tested now? And I go, she got tested at the Chappelle show tonight. And he goes, great. What about you? I go, I got tested yesterday with Rogan. They go, ah, you're killing me, man. And I go, come on. I've been hanging out with her all day. She got tested. So therefore, I'm probably clean. They go, wish I could help you. So I what? chatted with Michelle Wolf six feet away for 10 minutes, and I had to go. So you have to get tested. Every single person that's in there got tested that day? That day. Which And they all had rapid tests? Yeah, I guess it kind of makes sense, because if you're really going to play with, uh, with jizz like that, you want to be safe. I just can't believe this place that's having a big party is that you'd think they'd be like, lift the rope, get in here, fuck it, COVID's fake, who gives a shit? They do not fuck around. They're not taking any chances because they could get sued or, you know, they're already pushing it with these parties and these shows and the traveling and all that. So, like, they, they're not taking any, they're taking every precaution. Wow. A one day later no test. That's tough. I mean, that's tough sledding, but uh, I guess tough. good for them. Good for them. I mean, they're, they're doing it up. They're doing it right, I guess. But I was like, come on. I know Wolf. I know Will. So then I went down to the lobby and had a couple drinks and then Will came and hang out with me. Could you be like, hey, what if I put a pan pair of panties on my head and, and you can blindfold me so I can't spit on anybody or whatever? I really tried. I pleaded with the guy. I was like, dude, look, I'm not some schmo off the street. I, I know all these idiots. And uh, he was like, uh, no can do, fatty. So See, that's interesting because we talk about New York is tough and the, the laws and the rules. But in New York, you could walk up until this week, you could walk into a restaurant, no test at all. They don't I even know. ask you. There, you're going to get tested every day. So it, it all swivels out it's a big swivel I, I suppose he can swivel but yeah yeah they 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 are strict damn so no party yeah. for me oh well parties are overrated anyways i hate parties i just wanted the photo op i wanted to get rogan a headlock and nuggie him but i did the pot i went to his cool uh cool studio that looks like the inside of an asshole and a fucking proctology exam but uh it looks like a spaceship how was it was it uh like does it feel like i picture that place i've seen photos it feels like you say give me a pepsi and it comes up from the table and yeah, like, it does it, it's like that he's got a vending machine because i flew there at like 7 a.m landed he's like where the hell are you because he's you know he's got 18 million things on a schedule and i go i'm in the uber and the guy was listening to him in the uber Wow. And I go, well, I'm in the Uber right now. I'll be there in 10 minutes. The guy's listening to you. He goes, don't tell him who I am, you fucking... I was like, oh, shit, you're right, you're right, sorry, because oh, I'm, I'm going to his place, you know? Right. So I was like, oh, shit, you're right, sorry, sorry. So then I get there, and it's very standoffish, and then I got tested. We had to wait 15 minutes. We chatted about Cuomo and made fun of him, and then uh, I got a negative, so then we were in. But he's got a vending machine Full of all these like protein bars, beef jerky, on it, pills, coffee, and it's all free. So I was just I sat by the vending machine for thirty minutes. Why don't we have the these fifteen minute tests? They should be mass making them. The uh, El Presidente should use the whatever that's called the presidential power to be like, hey Nike, Reebok, fucking you know Gibson guitars. You're all making the fifteen minute test. 
You're ma- everyone, just get these 15 minute tests at the Rose Bowl so we can have a fucking Rose Bowl for God's sakes. Well, 15 I think minutes like is nothing. Three, 200 bucks each, or that's what SNL does. They're paying out the Wahoo for these tests. They ain't well, cheap. They should pay some writers for the show, too. But I, I mean, that sounds amazing. <laughs> I mean, we could have all these events with these 15 minute tests, not to mention this remdesivir shit that they're sticking up Chris Christie's ass, that he's better in two days. They should be what? mass making this. Oh, you know, like the Trump cocktail. Whatever they gave that psycho, give it to us. The cocktail. I'm over here snorting melatonin like an amateur. Give me that remdesivir. You know, put it on a cock and let me swallow it so we can all get back to business. Here, here. I mean, I'm down for the vaccine. Shoot that vaccine into my ball bag and I'll jizz in every kid's mouth in the city and we'll all be clear. I can't wait for the vaccine. Hey, speaking of things that uh, are great, we also have one more sponsor here. Don't Let's not forget these guys. Oh, Manscaped. Wait. I love Manscaped. I love literally them. used it yesterday, the little razor thing. I forget what it's called. The ball saver. It's probably in here somewhere. The lawnmower. The lawnmower. Yes. Ball saver, lawnmower. I used it the other day. I, I was playing with my balls, and I was ripping out pubes left and right because they're all too lengthy. I went in there, zipped it right off. I'm clean as a whistle right now. I look like my nephew, and it's just beautiful. It works great. It's got a little light on it, which is yes. nice. It helps you see everything. It's Love really great. Get Manscaped. They are the only men's brand dedicated exclusively to below-the-belt grooming and hygiene, the best gift around for all the men in your life, Get the performance package featuring the new and improved lawnmower 3.0. That's what I used. It's waterproof, includes an LED light, and is made with advanced skin safe technology. There's so much good stuff in it. When you order the performer package from Manscaped, you not only get the lawnmower, you also get the crop preserver, an anti chafing ball deodorant and moisturizer. It's getting hot outside, and this will keep your balls from sticking. And the crop reviver, which the crop reviver, excuse me, which will keep your balls smelling fresh, just like spring flowers. Tell them how to get it. Here, here, big fan of the Manscaped. I keep that lawnmower in my bag, and I just use it all all day on the road. The battery's amazing. I love the light. Big fan of these guys, and they throw in all the anti-chafing ball deodorant and moisturizer. They they keep you smelling fresh uh, when you order. The performance package, get 20% off and free shipping when you use the code TUESDAYS at manscaped.com. That's manscaped.com and use the promo code TUESDAYS, plural, like your balls, for 20% off your first order. And always use the right tools for the job. Uh, boy, good stuff. I mean, that sounds amazing. I got, my, it's funny because Sarah, my wife, was in Austin while you were there. I was supposed what? to be there originally. Yeah. But uh, we got divorced, so I didn't ah, go. It's about um, time. But she's been gone all week. This is crazy. She's going to walk in any minute here as we're recording. She's on her way back from the airport. But I'm living a strange life over here because she went from Monday to Monday or Tuesday to Monday. She's been gone. And I just had the place to myself. And I got to say a lot of things, first That's and foremost. A, such a treat, by the way. I feel I mean, I feel like Costanza over here after Susan died. I, I'm, I'm playing <laughs> guitar. I'm, I got her panties on my head. I'm like... There's shit everywhere. I had to do a deep clean this morning. I had three girls over here and two guys and one cup. And yeah. it, it's so strange. <laughs> and I got to say, I feel so much gratitude I, to all the Tuesdays out there. And there must be a million solo single Tuesdays because we got a, a strange bunch out there. Sure. Living this COVID life by yourself. I mean, I would have fucking shot myself right in the face already. Yeah. Because it, it is lonely, and I'm fine all day. I'm choosing the movies. I, I'm doing whatever. I'm getting takeout. But at night, that deciding to go to bed by yourself, you're like, all right, I guess I'll walk into the bedroom now. It's very strange. It is. Um, well, you get accustomed to the, the, the other human body around, and it, it makes such a difference. Even if Sarah doesn't talk, I know when she talks, you hit her. But even when she's quiet, it still is a, still a human body there, and it's warm, and it's something to bounce off of and hug and hold. And when that's gone, it's, it's a cold breeze coming through that boudoir. Well, you know me. I, I, I get anxiety when I try to go to sleep. I get sleep anxiety, and then in the morning, so... What helps me is I'm trying to go to bed, and I know she's TikTok until 5 a.m., so <laughs> to know there's an awake, breathing body next to you when you're trying to sleep, to, that at any moment I could be like, hey, babe, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm trying to sleep. I'm thinking about my dad fucking my mom over here, and it's keeping me up. Sure. And she'll say, you know, I am too, but 
so it's just hard staring at that ceiling alone. So I felt very alone, grateful to have this uh, this dame. And my my thoughts and prayers go out to all the, the single gays out there. Yeah, uh, I mean, thank God for porn and OnlyFans. I think that's keeping a lot of people from, uh, you know, pulling the trigger to the temple. But it's the, basically the plot of Home Alone. In the beginning, you're like, woo, let's get a pizza. Let's you know, put on an old movie and fuck with the pizza guy and chug some Coke and, you know, build some little uh, silhouettes that dance on a choo-choo train and all that, rocking around the Christmas tree. And then 20 minutes in, you're like, oh, God, I miss my fucking mom. That's what I did. I slept with the frame photo of her naked under my pillow, and I looked at it every night before yeah. bed. So it was strange. But uh, so yesterday, as mentioned, as teased, they said, hey, it's going to be 60 degrees. Well, first, I hit up Jason Cantor, our pal. Thursday was going to be warm, warm-ish. It was like 48 and sunny. And yep. I, I called him and I said, hey, I'm going to Harriman State Park. I'm going hiking. This is how I like to do it. I guess I'm a control freak. It's bad. I like to make the full plan, and then you invite a person to come along. Oh, this, that's this evil. Is, this is what I'm doing. Well, it is, it is what I'm doing. You're welcome okay. to come along. I've already made the thing. I'm but going I've, to Harriman. I've you, done these with you, and you try to throw a, a detour in, and wh- your whole world crumbles. Well, here's what happens a lot. and people, It sounds like I'm the asshole, but it's these other people <laughs> that you go, hey, I, I'm going to go hiking, and you come along if you'd like, which is nice to extend an invite. These people go... Instead of hiking, why don't we go to the beach? Why don't right. you come to my house? Why don't we go right. to the movies? And you're like, because this is the activity. Right. You're welcome to come along. Now, if we were sharing a house for a month and a week, I'd go, hey, what are we doing today? What do you guys think? Right. I'm, I'm I a democratic it. guy, but in this situation, this is what I want to do, so it's what I'm doing, and if you'd like, you can, you're welcome <laughs> to come. So I go, hey, we're going to Harriman, then we're going to Chick-fil-A, and then we're 69ing. And he goes, hey, I'm in. Great. You know, so yeah. I get in the car, I pick him up. And it, it's so exciting now because with all the COVID, there's this limited socializing. I scoop him up. We pretend to wear our masks in the car for 30 seconds. Then we sure. kiss, drive up to Harriman. Beautiful day. <laughs> there's zero people on the trail. We hike. I mean, literally, we didn't see one single person. You know, we're screaming the N word. It was just so much fun. Yeah. And that's a beautiful park up there, 50 minutes north of the city. What's it called? Harriman. Harriman. Sounds uh, Hebrew. I'm not sure what it is, but uh, we didn't see any men or women go yeah. up there. Beautiful day. Great hike. Good to get out there, you know, and uh, just spectacular. Then we'll look at the weather. We're like, not going to be many more like these. We realize Sunday, 55 and sunny, put together one of my famous Central Park hangs. And once again, it's December. So there's nobody there. We go to Sheep Meadow. You know, we were there in the summer. It's just packed. It's like a concert in there. Yeah. Yesterday, nobody in the park except for wow. like maybe 10 people. And we had a great group, killer group. We sat and it ended up being strangely muddy. So we sat in the mud. We all had dirty asses. We talked movies, comedy. We busted balls, shit on each other. And then right as the conversation's getting good, we just hear, you motherfucking faggot piece of shit. How do I know you're not looking at her phone right now? You fucking cocksucker. You're a fucking bitch. We look over and we got a first class New York cuckoo head. Oh, woman, that was some a, woman. And that was a Bobby the, Slayton set. Sorry. You know, you know the, the Frisbee people? They, they have that, that yes. the Frisbee with the hole in it and they throw it like 400 yards across the thing. There's a whole There's, group of these people. Every time they're there. So they evidently, some of them are on drugs. I don't know what they are, but this lady must have thought her man was cheating or texting, and it was manager and an umpire. She's punching him in the face, like winding up and punching. She kept telegraphing all her punches because the guy was like perfectly blocking it every time. Yeah. And then he gave her like a face mush. What do you call that when you palm the face? Oh, yeah. It was like a brief face mush and i mean it went on for 25 minutes we're all laughing doing play by play having a great time and then she would leave and come back and she's like everyone thinks i'm crazy you all think i'm crazy i'm not crazy it was hilarious amazing and then she kept throwing the frisbee every once in a while she'd just like whip the (laughs) frisbee to some guy like 300 feet away and wait so he was cheating she found out then he she attacked him I'm not sure. She said she kept saying, give me your phone. And then she said both phones. And then it was like a classic argument thing where she's like, give me your phone. And then when he gave her the phone, she was like, I bet you already erased it. So she was already setting up to not right. find. 
Right. And at one point, she kind of settled down a little bit, and we had two women in our group, and I was like, I'll give $100 to one of you to walk up to that guy and say, hey, you're texting me too much. I don't know uh, who this bitch you're texting me about. And I was like, it would be so amazing, but then she would go crazy. Yeah. And then she's going crazy again. The whole park's looking at her, and some psycho whisperer came up to her, and he was like in the group, I guess. He, he, had like a, he was dressed like Marty McFly. He put his arm around her, walked away, and they sat down Indian style and just kind of chatted quietly. So he's got the goods on her, whatever it is. Wow. He's the coos whisperer. He knows how to ha- like calm her down. Exactly. So whatever it was, it was it was a fun event. We sit there for two hours. We really missed you. We had a good time. And we had two Frisbees ourselves. There was about eight of us. So we all spread out because there was so much room. We're throwing two Frisbees at once. Hey, whoo! We're shooting it across. And some people suck at Frisbees. Some are good. Yeah. And great time. And then we say, hey, I'm starving. Everyone goes, I'm hungry. I'm hungry. I go, let's go to Shake Shack. And everyone goes, yeah, Shake Shack. Everyone's jumping up and down. We're high-fiving. We walk across the park. We go to Shake Shack. There's seven of us. And they go, we could seat seven of you inside downstairs if you want. There's nobody down Ooh. there. So we all look and we're like, is everybody game to everyone goes, yeah, what the fuck? Fuck it. So we got the whole downstairs. It was like a private birthday party at wow. Shake Shack. It was like me, Louie, Donnelly, Fiore, uh, Cantor, Isabel, Cantor's new squeeze. We all go down there. We get double cheeseburgers. Louie gets three cheeseburgers. Ooh. I get two pi- big piles of fries. We're all sharing, spitting, orgy. Great time. And it was the eve of restaurants shutting down. So we right. got in while the getting was good. The last indoor dining, good group of seven, a lot of laughs. And then we, we were the only ones down there. So we were just zinging and zanging down ah. there. That sounds great amazing. Time. It was wow. great. And then we all walked all the way from the Upper West over to 59th and 5th Avenue. And it was like Seinfeld. When they get off the train, they each go their individual way. Yes. It was like, great hang. Wake up today. It's 30 degrees and pouring rain. Just a miserable overcast day. But we, we got it while the getting was good. So we got to hope for a couple more climate changey 55 degree days. And we can all run out in the park and have a nice time. It'd be nice, yeah. Wow, that sounds incredible. And yeah, it's all shut down now, so you, you got that last orgy in before the, the cult drank the Kool-Aid. Oh, it's, and, and it's so fun when everybody, it reminds me of drinking, when you're like, what about Shake Shack? And everybody just fully agrees, that's what we're doing, and Louie and Donnelly have been dieting, but they're like, oh, fuck it, and ah. like, yeah! Like, they just, they relapse, and they're probably both dead now, but... Sure. Oh, it was great, the, the grease, the ketchup, the whole thing, and uh, all Woo. that stuff you love. I Great love head. it, man. Now, now, how good do you feel when you throw out the Shake Shack idea and it works out? It's a great feeling. I mean, like, and first of all, it wasn't just like, okay, I can do Shake Shack. Everybody was like, yeah. And we got, you know, we got shakes and burgers, the whole thing. Great. Yes. Great fun. Great day. Boy, that's a beauty. And yeah, the New, New York, uh, New York weather is like a, like a fluctuating crazy broad with mood swings. I don't know what's it's one day it's freezing and the next day it's sunny and nice. Yeah, it's it's bizarre. So you gotta just hope for a couple more. I'm sure we'll get a couple more fifty degrees because you know you're. Um, it's like late at night when you're trying to fuck. Your uh, standards go down. You're like forty eight. Right. Let's go on a picnic. Yes, exactly, exactly. Yeah, like last call. You really drop that bar, you know, and you you'll take anything. So yeah, that was that. And uh, also, just want to tell everyone again about the Patreon. We are rocking and rolling. We just did a live Patreon, which so many people came to and had great questions. I would say Tuesdays have the best questions of any podcast fans. Thoughtful, interesting questions, and uh, we got we got smart fans. I think they're they're interesting and and uh, thinkers. You know, yeah, they're wise and they're thoughtful, good people. And also, uh, I started doing this show with Ron on. We're just talking movies, bullshitting, and it's on the Patreon. It's on my YouTube, too, but if you don't want to look at our fat, dumb faces, it's on the Patreon. You can listen to it as a podcast on the Patreon if you're not familiar. Or go to my YouTube. I'm trying to get back those years I lost on the YouTube situation. Yeah. So uh, go subscribe because most of you are not subscribed. The numbers are not pretty. So get over there. Get on the Patreon, get on the YouTube, and uh, I don't know, blow your father, I guess. Yeah, yeah, blow everybody. And uh, I got to give a shout out to my pal Ron. He opened a burger pop up in New Orleans called uh, Bub's Burgers. And uh, he hooked me up when I went to New Orleans with a bunch of uh, free burgers, and the food was great, the fries were great. So just, you mentioned Shake Shack. I got to throw that out to Big Ronnie, Ronnie Richard. 
Love a good cheeseburger. Nothing like oh. it. And, and when I say good cheeseburger, we talked about this at Shake Shack. I like like a good fast food in and out Shake Shack. All the burgers that they like, you got to go to this restaurant and get the burger. It's always too much meat. It's not fun. I, I don't get it. Like they're like Manetta Lane. This thing. I'm like Shake Shack is better than Manetta Lane or whatever Iron Burger, whatever the fuck it's called, Black Iron Lung. Yes, I feel the same way. They people do that with everything. You got to go to this place. I'm like, I just want a Bud Light and a fucking hand job. I don't need this uh, artisanal pilsner and a, and a reach around. Just give me the basics. Yeah, love a basic, basic bitch, basic broad. I also want to plug our friend Eric Newman has an album, and uh, ah. he said, "Hey, can you plug my album?" I said, "Sure." He's got COVID, so for God's sakes, get the guy's album. I forget the name of it. I, <laughs> I think it's I called suck. Super Spreader. It's uh, <laughs> it's filmed at the cellar. He gave it to everybody for free. No, no, I'm sure it's fun. Uh, oh, oh, I got a big, a big announcement. Apropos of nothing, whatever that means. I got somebody to rent the apartment. Hey, that's great news. Huge monkey off my twi- tits, and uh, I, she's a nice Asian lady. She draws for comic books. She's a big nerd, and she she went in hook, line, and sinker. I mean, I lowered the price down to eleven ninety nine a month, but still, it's oh. off my back. Don't let her hear any episodes in the archives, for God's sakes. Oh, yeah, you got that right. Uh, she's from Wuhan. I mean, she's a super nice lady. She won't wear a mask. But, yeah, she's uh, – thank you, sister. I forgot her name, but you, you're saving my ass here. What oh, my God. What a Christmas God. miracle. So it's a co-op, though, right? I mean, do you have to fix a sink? If the sink breaks, what happens with that? I go in there with a tool bag, and I cut the sleeves off my shirt. I grow a mustache. I show my ass crack. I'm going to be under there with Google, like, uh, figuring it out. Like, I'm going to be watching a tutorial while I'm fucking fixing the sink like a bad porno. Oh, God. That's terrifying to me. But, you know, it, what can you do? You'll do it. You'll do fine. You'll be a great landowner or homeowner, whatever the hell it's called. Homo. But I, I it's so scary because uh, we'll wrap this up, but... She, when you, when you, I'm showing her the place, I'm giving her the keys, and you realize how much of a shit box it is when someone new is moving in. Right. She, she's like, uh, does that window, is you going to fix that? I was like, oh shit, I didn't know the window was broken. Yeah, yeah, we'll get on that. She's like, what about the dead raccoon in the tub? You're like, oh shit, yeah, we'll get on that. And she's like, does this light work? I'm like, that light's never worked. So everything's fucked, but you, you realize it when someone new moves in. Yeah, that's tough. It's funny too, because you've like graduated from there. So yes. you're like, yeah, it's, you got to watch them, whatever. It's like if you, you dump an ugly chick for a hot chick, and then you hook your friend up with the ugly chick, and then you watch them fuck for a couple bucks. Perfect analogy. I'll watch you fuck for free or whatever you want, and uh, she's a nice lady, and I feel like I'm jipping her, but hey, it's New York. Dog eat dog, and she loves to eat dog, so uh, it's all working out. Uh, um, all right. What, a, what an app. I think we really did something there. Oh, yeah. Sorry, but I feel like I hogged this one, but you got to get that Rogan out. No. So when does Rogan the episode come out? I'm assuming I did it on Friday, and it's still not out, so I'm assuming either tomorrow or the next day. It's got to be out by Tuesday or today, I should say. Uh, but, right. he, you know, he stockpiles. He's got like 17 people going in and out of there. It's like a conveyor belt of rock climbers, scientists, racists, uh, Jews, and, and comedians. And that's just you. Uh, <laughs> classic Woo. Uh, Woo. all right keep an eye out for that go subscribe to the youtube and uh, subscribe to our youtube the tuesdays with stories youtube the videos up there and you get it a week early if you get on the patreon so do all the fun stuff and the, the fucking t public we got t-shirts up yes the, ass. the shirts are killing it buy a shirt give us a gift also our our specials you're 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 just licking the taint of a, of a two mil and let's get that puppy over before oh uh 2021 Ho, ho, ho. I'm doing my special, all. your special. Yeah, check it out. Mindful Metal Jacket. I got a thing with Sam I'm doing where we get drunk on, on the on the Zoom. And uh, yeah, let's go and one Sam's more drink. Sam's new special. Sorry, oh! Sam's new special. On the roof, up on the roof. Up Roofy. on the roof. Yeah, go watch that. Subscribe, comment. Go fill the comments with Tuesday. Go, hey, Sam Morell's the best comic ever. Love Tuesdays. And really get that algorithm cooking. Yes. All right. I, think, I think that'll do it. So uh, George is saying, cut your tip of your dick off. Praise Allah. <laughs>